Hey, welcome to Plato Weight Management. If you are new here to our channel, please make sure to subscribe for more exclusive weekly content. And as always, please take note of our disclaimer. There definitely isn't a shortage of evidence linking excess weight to chronic health conditions. Cardiovascular disease, diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, gallstones and certain cancers are just some of the risks that come with increased weight. However, it also plays a role in the development of osteoarthritis, particularly knee osteoarthritis, with studies finding that people overweight have a 2.45 increased risk of developing the condition and almost twice that in people obese with 4.55. Therefore, today we'll be breaking down the surprising ways that excess body fat can lead to knee osteoarthritis or knee OA as we'll be referring to it in this video. You may have heard OA referred to as degenerative joint disease as it affects the entire joint, including structures such as the bone, cartilage, ligaments and the synovium. Yet it often starts by breaking down the protective cartilage that covers the heads of bones and changing what's underneath, gradually spreading and impacting the other structures over time. The diminished cartilage is an issue because when this happens, it lets the bones within the joint rub off each other more easily and can simultaneously grow abnormal spurs. So now that we know what OA is, why do those with excess body fat seem to be more likely to develop the condition at the knee? Well, one reason could be from the altered biomechanics that happens as a consequence. I'll explain. A study by Brower et al. found that those who were obese had approximately a threefold increased risk for knee valgus, as well as a fivefold increased risk for knee varus alignment. And what is knee valgus and knee varus? Well, knee valgus, often called knock knees, is a condition where the knees angle in and touch each other when the legs are straightened. In contrast, knee varus, or bow legs, is when the knees angle outward and become more distant from each other, also when the legs are straightened. There are several reasons why a suboptimal BMI may contribute to both of these conditions. But one basic example we'll give is how it can relate to a knee valgus. As I'm sure you're aware, when someone gains a lot of weight, the fat builds up disproportionately on the front side of the torso versus the back side. But what mightn't be so apparent is that because of this, the pelvis will actually start to tilt forward as a result, which makes sense with there being more weight on the front than the back, right? When this happens, one of the biomechanical adjustments that the body will make to counteract the accompanying shift in the center of gravity will be increased internal rotation of the thigh bones, also known as the femurs. In other words, the thigh bones will start to rotate towards each other. Similarly, the shin bones, or the tibias, will start to turn inward too, while the feet will begin to roll inwards towards the big toes, causing the arches of the feet to drop and flatten. So then, how do these changes relate to knee osteoarthritis? Well, these changes made by the body in response to the extra fat stores can cause the joint space within the knee joint to become narrower, making bones rub off each other more often, damaging the overlying cartilage and increasing the likelihood or the severity of the disorder. Yet, it is not only the biomechanics coinciding from the excess weight that can impact this joint space, but also the sheer weight itself. For example, it's been said that just 10 extra pounds can place as much as 50 pounds of additional pressure on your knee joints. So you can imagine an extra 100 pounds impact on the wear and tear. In part, the quadriceps muscle may play a role in the increased pressure here, as it has been proposed that the more overweight one gets, the more likely this muscle group will become weak. This is relevant because the quadriceps has a major shock absorption role, and if it's not taking its fair share of the load at the knee, it can lead to excessive strain on the cartilage within. Moreover, fat tissue for a long time was actually thought to be passive energy storage. As a result, knee OA in those overweight was only put down to increase wear and tear because of the associated extra weight. However, fat tissue has become recognized as a metabolic, endocrine organ able to secrete substances that induce inflammation like leptin, resistin and adiponectin. These substances are of particular interest when it comes to knee osteoarthritis as they've been highlighted to play a role in how healthy cartilage is at the knee in overweight people. The reasons why remain inconclusive and to be honest are quite complicated to explain. Still, it suggests that targeting inflammation could be a method to support weight loss strategies in helping knee osteoarthritis. 
Furthermore, metabolic factors that coincide with increased body weight, including high bad cholesterol, low good cholesterol, high triglycerides, increased blood pressure and increased abdominal fat sores and diabetes may be causative of OA in the knee too. For instance, one study found that knee osteoarthritis was twice as common in obese women with at least two of these factors than in obese women with fewer. Notably, OA in the overweight population will most likely stem from a complex interaction of these contributors rather than individually. Moving forward, it's important to point out that the impact between increased weight status and knee osteoarthritis isn't unidirectional, unfortunately. Knee OA can be a severely debilitating condition and researchers have suggested that the subsequent pain can impact optimal weight management. Firstly, by using fewer calories from undertaking less physical activity due to the pain. And secondly, by consuming more calories daily in reaction to pain, for pain relief, as a distraction from pain, and from having less ability to undertake activities that they enjoy in the absence of eating. So, in other words, knee OA can further disrupt weight loss efforts, and in some cases may even make the weight worse, making the relationship between the two self-perpetuating. Therefore, it's essential to use ways to improve osteoarthritis symptoms to break this vicious cycle. Here are our top four tips for doing so, starting with the most obvious, given the topic of this video. Weight loss. However, since knee OA can limit weight loss as we've gone through, we recommend undertaking it hand in hand with one, if not all, of the other knee osteoarthritis tips. But first, if you are interested in undertaking our evidence-based and results-backed personalized Plato weight management program, please click the link in the top right hand corner of the video or follow the link in the description. Weight loss has long been known as a method that helps knee OA. Studies have shown that 10% weight loss reduces pain, inflammation and knee joint loads while improving function and overall quality of life in overweight and obese adults. But as you can imagine, the more weight you lose, the more benefits you will reap, as losing 20% compared to 10% of baseline body weight has been shown to have even a further improvement in these treatment outcomes. Interestingly, one study found that for every pound lost, it will reduce the load on the knee by up to four times while going about our daily activities. Another tip to help osteoarthritis at the knee is to visit a physiotherapist. Physiotherapists are specialists in correcting biomechanical abnormalities, so seeing one could help reduce symptoms by opening up the joint space. But again, muscular imbalances are only one reason why knee alignment may decline. Previous traumatic injuries, rheumatoid arthritis and bone development disorders are some other underlying conditions that could impede optimal knee arrangement. Still, most often a physiotherapist will be able to determine after your initial appointments whether you may benefit from their help. A systematic review and meta-analysis in 2019 investigating non-pharmacological and non-surgical interventions for knee osteoarthritis found that exercise, particularly resistance training, was the most effective treatment for pain, strength and function of all interventions explored. But this isn't any form of resistance training. Physiotherapists will use their clinical experience to figure out which exact muscles need to be targeted, as well as if other fitness elements like mobility, stability, balance and proprioception need to be worked on to provide you with the best possible treatment outcomes. Aside from exercise, the authors found that pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, or PEMF, had the second best results in managing knee osteoarthritis. PEMF is a safe and non-invasive magnetic device that helps the condition by directing small amounts of energy towards it. It is said to work through circulation and cellular functioning benefits, reducing inflammation. So by undertaking physiotherapy, you could help alleviate osteoarthritis symptoms arising from inflammatory factors as well as biomechanical. Moreover, other interventions that were identified as being helpful for knee OA included interferential current, laser therapy, shockwave therapy, musculoskeletal manipulations, and neuromuscular electrical simulation. However, the researchers did state that more studies were needed to recommend their use fully. Further, physiotherapists may be able to advise you on orthotics if need be. 
In certain cases, these can help optimize the alignment of the lower limb, aiding stabilization, healing and ease of function. Now, it is true that the effectiveness of the profession becomes more challenging the more someone goes above a normal body weight range. However, many people overweight with osteoarthritis still report significant benefits in function, strength, as well as pain relief after treatment, so it's definitely worth considering. Next, another method to help knee OA is cardio. A common misconception among many is that cardio will worsen the disorder. In fact, it's not only safe, but according to the American College of Sports Medicine, it helps reduce pain, fatigue and inflammation. Although it's important not to rush into strenuous exercise and gradually ease into it over several weeks instead. The American College of Sports Medicine indicates that if you're just starting off cardio, you should aim for three days of 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise weekly, a pace where you'd be comfortably able to talk to a friend while doing it, then build up to a total of 150 minutes over five days in the following weeks. When it comes to aerobic exercise and knee osteoarthritis, it's advised to stick with activities that don't place a lot of stress on the knee, like walking, cycling, swimming, aquatic exercise and using the elliptical machine. And of course, keep in mind that cardio will assist in weight loss outcomes too, helping to gain benefits from that at the same time. Besides using diet as a means to facilitate weight loss and help improve osteoarthritis, there are other benefits from dietary approaches that have been suggested to aid symptoms too. For instance, women with moderately raised cholesterol levels were shown to have over a two-fold increased risk of knee OA and it appears that the bad type of cholesterol impacts OA development as well as progression. So by reducing foods that raise your bad cholesterol to occasionally, namely those containing trans and saturated fat, such as processed foods and things like pizza, hamburgers, butter and cheese, you can improve your cholesterol helping knee osteoarthritis. Additionally, increased consumption of long-chain omega-3 fatty acids has also been demonstrated to help the condition. You can find these types of fatty acids in oily fish like trout, salmon and sardines, but you can also increase your intake through fish oil supplements. Further, a micronutrient that has been suggested to help knee OA is vitamin K via its role in bone and cartilage mineralization, and can be found in parsley, grapes and hard-boiled eggs. In sum, knee osteoarthritis is a hugely prevalent and problematic condition in overweight populations today due to biomechanical, pressure, inflammatory and metabolic mechanisms. At the same time, the symptoms that can arise from it can get in the way of optimal weight management, leading to a situation where weight gain facilitates knee osteoarthritis and vice versa. Therefore, to give us the best chance at putting a stick in the spoke, so to say, we should take measures to improve our diet and physical function through the methods outlined. Have you had any success in helping knee osteoarthritis? What worked for you? We'd love to hear from you in the comment section down below. Additionally, if you're new here, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. So that has been our video. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.